we're going to reflect this triangle across this line here, uh, called by now, using just our compass and a straight edge. So the big concept behind a reflection is that uh, for every point in our pre-image here, they're all going to travel in a line that's perpendicular to the line of reflection. And they're going to go an equal distance uh, that they're away from the line of reflection to the opposite side. And so in essence, the line of reflection, when we're done, becomes the perpendicular bisector of the segment that connects the pre-image to the image. And so in this construction, we're actually going to do this uh, without drawing any perpendicular lines. Uh, we're actually going to take advantage of some facts about isosceles triangles and use our compass to essentially construct pairs of isosceles triangles that share a base but point in opposite directions and that'll give us uh, where our image point goes. So we'll see that once we construct our first point. So to begin with we're going to uh, I'm going to start with point D here. I'm going to choose a radius of the compass uh, that is big enough that it's going to cross the line of reflection in at least two places. So I get two intersection points to work with. So other than that, the size doesn't really matter. Uh, you don't want to make it too small because then your intersection points are kind of close together and hard to work with. And too big is just difficult to work with. So uh, this is usually a pretty good size. So all I need is just a little bit of an arc there. I don't need to draw the whole circle because I just need to know where those two intersection points are. All right. So from here, uh, I'm going to take my compass, pick it up, and now draw two arcs from each of those intersection points. And all I really need to draw is enough the arcs to see where they cross. And I can kind of predict where I think this point is going to end up, you know, just kind of imagining where it might be. So uh, I'm just going to draw kind of a bit of an arc there. And then pick up the compass again, keep the exact same radius. That's the key here. And then put your metal point on the other intersection and draw enough of an arc to see where they cross. And that point is our reflection. B prime. This is probably one of the easiest constructions uh, of transformations you'll do with a compass and straight edge. Uh, you're really drawing, you know, four circles, four parts of circles, all with the same radius. So where are the triangles in this diagram that we just drew? Well, if you think about connecting uh, our pre-image point to these two intersection points, and then using that part of this line of reflection here as the base, we can see where these triangles start to come in. So there's one there. And there is one there. Okay, so how do I know those are isosceles triangles? Well, when we constructed this first set of arcs, they were actually part of the same circle. So if I come back here, I think my compass is still set. Yep. And actually draw in a little more of that circle. Okay, remember those two intersections came from part of the same circle. And because they are uh, the distance from the center out to the circumference, both of those lines here represent a radius of the same circle. And of course, one of the properties of a circle is that it has the same radius all the way around. And so because those are both a radius, they have the same length and they're equal, right? Now this side may or may not actually be equal to these sides. It doesn't really matter, we don't care. Uh, it's just important the fact that these are isosceles triangles and all we need is to show that two sides are equal. And then how do we know that these other two sides are equal? Well, because we use, when we use our compass, one of the important properties of the compass is that it helps us measure. And as long as we don't change the radius, and I pick up and use that exact same radius, I am copying that segment length. And so these additional segments also end up being congruent to this first, equal to the same length. And there we go. And then we're just taking advantage of some properties of isosceles triangles where essentially we can think of these as two right triangles, which gives us uh, our perpendicular line there. Okay. Obviously you wouldn't construct all of these lines um, in a regular reflection. I just drew these in here for uh, illustrative purposes. So on a real construction, you wouldn't need to draw any of these triangles. We were just doing that for 
demonstration to see where or why exactly this construction works. Um, I think it's a pretty interesting one and kind of nice to understand why it works. So let's just go ahead and finish it off. Um, let's go ahead and do point E next. So again, choose a radius that is big enough so it's going to cross the line of reflection in two places. There are my two arcs, the intersection points. And again, keep that exact same radius, don't change it. And draw two more arcs from uh, the center, or using the center of this, those intersection points. And then kind of roughly predict where you think E prime might be. Right there. And, oh, I almost missed it. Right there. Okay, so there's my point E prime. And then finally F. All right, when you have points that are fairly close to the line of reflection, um, the temptation is to use small circles, but remember with small circles, they're kind of difficult to uh, work with with the compass, right? The smaller it is, the less kind of control you have. So I still like to make a, a decent sized circle here. So point up there, point up there, and then flip it around. Arc, same radius, arc. And intersection. Here's our point. So there you go. And then we, of course, reconnect all of our points back in the same order. And there is our reflection constructed with just uh, compass and straight edge.